Howdy folks, the uh, Snapmaker A250T, the 3-in-1 machine, runs 3D printing, it does laser, it does CNC. We're going to switch it to CNC today, but right now I'm running a job off and I have to wait on it, I guess, but uh, it might be interesting to tell you what's going on here. I've got seven printers and this is the one I'm using today to finish this job with, so yeah, interesting. So here's what's going on because this might be of some interest to uh, viewers. The I've got seven machines running and they are a small printer farm. We do some very specialized, customized stuff that uh, we started 30 days ago. We'll be talking more about printer farming, I guess, and making money with printers in the near future. Uh, right now it's like it's kind of like in the experimental mode and I'm getting a little bit of a surprise with the 3D printing farm because I did not expect to be making any money uh, in the first 30 days or so, but we actually started making some money. I was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> that wasn't in the plan. <laughs> I just assumed, you know, we wouldn't see anything for 90 days, whatever. But anyways, I was running off some jobs and I needed an extra printer to run a job off with. And I've got this thing sitting here on display for you guys for Monday to do CNC. So it was like, well, well, we'll throw the job on there over the weekend. And the models, if they come up kind of nasty or they need cleaning and stuff, you know, it takes time and you got to, you know, screw around with them. And the models came out a little bit fuzzy from the 3D printers. and It wasn't really happy. And I thought, you know, we're running standard speed, so we're not running high definition or anything weird like that. But we're still trying to get a clean model out of the machines, but you know, get it as fast as possible within a you know decent amount of time. And adding this machine in there was just like, well, it'll just save time because an extra machine could be running a job off. The model from this one, the models came out way better than any other machine I have here right now. And that was kind of, you know, what? So what I did was I went ahead and put the rest of the jobs to finish up on this machine instead of the other printers. In fact, I'm not even sure how I'm gonna run the other printers now because of this one, because the models come out so clean and they actually have better detail on them. And that's like, and it's the same amount of time, roughly. They're all, this, this particular job is between three and a half, four hours, depending on the machine, but it's all, like I said, standard setting. We're not pushing anything too hard. We're not trying to get them out in a big hurry, but we're trying to get fairly, you know, decent clean models. So something about the A250T from Snapmaker said, you know, I can do a better job, and it did. It, it, it was like, as a, so I've said before, but as a 3D printer, it was really good. Now, there was a couple caveats there I gotta throw in. And one of them was at one point after running about uh, six or seven jobs through over the weekend, uh, I had to stop and recalibrate the machine because that magnetic bed thing had somehow gotten, you know, kind of candy, you know, a little bit out of place. And you know, all of a sudden, I couldn't even get the PLA to stick kind of thing. Was, Whoa, that's, that's impossible. So I recalibrated, and sure enough, once I recalibrated, we were back to working again. The uh, magnetic base, you take it out, and you can sort of bend it and pop the models off, but you should probably recalibrate when you do that because you've probably thrown things off. Just, let's face it, with 3D printing, just a hair can be all the difference between you know, failure and success. So. As soon as we get this job done, we will start taping the show for converting this to a CNC so we can run it. Also, when we run the CNC, uh, I'm gonna see about taking this uh, enclosure off because I don't need all that sawdust caught up in there anyways, right? You know, it's like, the enclosure's uh, great for the uh, laser. I really like that idea. And also, if you're running uh, ASA or ABS plastics for 3D printing, an enclosure with power venting as it has for a feature, Awesome. Now, there's one other thing, and I can't really show it to you right now, but you can probably see I relocated the spool holder that they use down a little bit and at the back inside the enclosure because I found it's better to run off that. It's a cleaner, easier situation. They had it mounted on the outside coming through a small hole in the side, and I found that the PLA was really getting hard to even pull through from that angle. It was like not a great idea. This simplifies things. It works great, and it's it's not a problem to switch out, you know, PLA or whatever, and it's all enclosed, plus the heat inside helps to kind of um, keep the moisture away from the PLA anyways while you're running it, so I thought this is actually a good upgrade, but as soon as we come back, 
hopefully this job will be done and we'll do some CNC work. So we finished the project. I took the uh, magnetic build plate for the 3D printer off, of course, and set it aside. First thing we're going to do is unplug the 3D printer head and set that cable aside. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take the four screws out of the back of this and remove it. Yeah, there's the plate that we mount to. He actually used this hole right here, this hole right here, that close one right there, and that one there. And that's what bolts into the back of these uh, head units, this of course being the 3D printer unit. So the CNC will be the same thing. They have the four holes back here, the bolts will come through and screw this on so it'll be attached. So Got the four bolts tight and I've replugged the same cable we were using. We're now plugging into the CNC head. Uh, next thing also, well because I had the enclosure on, I had to plug the power supply back into the uh, grid back here. Uh, the next thing obviously is going to be the bed. So to help convert, Snapmaker sends us and includes this spoil board which we'll be screwing down on. But first well, we got to get this guy out of here. And again we'll unplug the, uh, unplug the heat bed and remove it. Okay so I took the heat bed off and the, unplugged it and I set it aside. Now we've got this so uh, to get this out of here fast I used a drill with their uh, bit uh, which I don't recommend because you could damage some stuff and blow the warranty or something but in the meantime here's the spoil board that comes with the machine in order to do CNC but it's in plastic wrap so as soon as I get this wrap off we'll screw this thing down all right I got the spoil board down ha uh, the screws for the spoil board are different from the screws that are for the other two modes so you have to look for your M410s and again like I said keep these baggies keep these labels because you're going to keep your hardware together especially if you're switching back and forth like I am the uh, snack maker gives you these really weird uh, clamps uh, for clamping down the uh, work area and they'll kind of go like this with uh, a bolt and of course they'll bolt there's places to screw into here all over the board so you can you know bolt down to your uh, lumber to hold it in place while you uh, CNC carve so uh, I'll find the rest of the hardware for this and uh, we'll come back okay for these clamps we need the M470s and again like I said keep the toolbox and keep the stuff in in the little baggies because they got these nice labels on them and that'll make life a lot easier so when you go to put these away you can put them back in the bag and you'll know where they are obviously we're not going to do anything like this right now I just wanted you to see the clamp and how the assembly goes with the uh, on top with the little wing nut and the screw goes down through in the spoil board is pre-tapped holes so you can just screw these in get them you know pretty good in there like maybe, maybe half an inch or so and then tighten the wing nut and you got a really actually got a really good clamp to hold your work yeah. pulled out the collet which is comes in this cute little uh, looks like a little pill jar or something I also took out one of the nasty square looking uh, 3.1 yeah it's a, it's a shank diameter okay and it's a uh, a tail uh, type stock so I took that out I put it in here tighten this up and they supply these really fancy looking uh, wrenches to tighten everything up with so we're all set there so now all I've got to do is get this uh, board held down and we'll throw a project at it. But meantime, I'm uh, starting up the machine and the first thing it did was it told me to put safety glasses on, which I already, I'm wearing. Uh, fix the material. Okay, let me see if I can fix the material here. Okay, so we'll just put some blue painter's tape to hold the wood in place while we carve it. Uh, let me check the book, I'll be right back. So we've got a piece of board here to carve up and I've actually brought this down. I'm starting to set it up. Center, uh, in this case for a point of origin, I'm going to set it in about the center. Also lined up my board with these grids on the uh, spoil board. I don't know if that'll make any difference. It should help to keep everything nice and lined up and straight. And I also got all four of these clamps. These clamps are interesting. I think in some ways they're a lot better than a lot of the clamp sets that I've ever seen come with a CNC. So again, Snapmaker seems to have stepped out of its way and said, okay, let's give them something special, you know. So what we're doing right now is we're just kind of jogging the machine over using the control package that uh, comes with it. Uh, just so, can you guys see? Okay. Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the jog control and bring this uh, over and, of course, down. Got it set on 10, 10 millimeter uh, movement. And what I'm going to do is set this up and then create a, a point of origin. I think they call it the center. Oops, I'm going the wrong way here. Yeah, another thing, this plate moves backwards to the what you would think it will move. So that can kind of screw you up a little bit. 
There we go, let's bring her down so we can really get a good look at her. Yeah, one more. Alright. Now you can see uh, about the center. Actually, not bad right there for center. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, turn this to one millimeter so that I can bring it down carefully until it touches the lumber. And then I'm going to measure that up from that about five, five millimeter. That way I have a point of origin in two different locations. I have a point of origin for my area, for my Z, but I also have a point of origin. So we're going to set work origin as being that's the center. Then I'm going to use the jog mode and I'm going to take it up one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to, that way, when I set the job up, the tool path, this will already be five millimeter up and then it will come down five millimeters to where it actually starts to work. Uh, let's try the origin again. I'm just going to set it again. because I'm, uh, I just realized I made a mistake because the Z, I generally set my oil origin with my Z about five millimeters off my work. Same with the Y. It's now set and same with the X. So now this is a center point of origin. And then we start the job, uh, spindle speed, let's see what we got there. You know, it's off right now anyway, so. And there's a 50% and 100% spindle speed. I don't hear any difference there, but that's fine. Ah, there we go, yeah, spindle off. And uh, now I'm gonna load the file on the little USB and put it in there and we'll carve something. I'm back. I had to get off camera for a minute because when I did a quick test, I found out that when I added five millimeters to here, the software didn't understand it. So apparently you want the tool bit to be like right on top of the lumber. So now we're going to go back to uh, the file and see if we can run it. Go to the USB. I've got a text in here and start the job and let's see how we do. Oh, safety goggles. Yes, always. Go ahead and start. So here we go. Stop this, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Stop the job, and I'm all I'm all done with it. Okay, the uh, tool bit I put in was the biggest, and I did a really small font, so I kind of ended up with a little bit of a, a mess on my hands. But if you do it right, yeah, it'll come up like that, and it will cut it. It looks like it does a great job. So yeah, it's a CNC machine, and it will do everything nicely for a CNC machine that I've seen. And the file was, the software is easy. Oh man, it's like a no brainer to use. The tool path is set up really easily. Couple of things that uh, I missed on was you need to set the tool bit right to the top of the lumber uh, at the uh, origin center and then start your job from there. It will actually raise the tool bit up, go over to start and then start cutting. That's not the way some of the other CNC machines I have used in the past, that's not the way they work. So, Again, snap maker is a little different. So once you understand what's going to happen, then you can set your job up so you get this instead of that. But the point is, it is every part of a nice little CNC machine, and it can do you know really nice work. So oh, it's a good CNC. I need it as a 3D printer right now, but, but it is a good CNC machine. So that is the end of the snap maker A250T. The Snapmaker is a 3-in-1 machine, and it is a 3-in-1 machine. It does it all, so wow, gold stars all the way, I guess. Man, alive. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the notice bell. And when we come back, uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to mention, and that was the, uh, the tap, uh, a metric tap and die set would be handy because these threads in here on the spoil board are gonna get messed up with junk and you're gonna to wanna to be able to clean them out. Also, uh, the brand new spoil board, I am having a little bit of trouble with the threading on these bolts. I would clean them, but I don't have any metric tap and dies. So when we come back, maybe we better talk about metric tap and die sets. I don't know. Over and out.